Hey guys, Alex Cameron here, just bringing you a very quick video about multicams in DaVinci Resolve 16. I know people are having some issues with multicams and I've got a workflow here that I think might be of interest and be helpful to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm going to brush over a few of the basics of Resolve and obviously um, please do reach out if there's anything that's confusing. But uh, yeah, drop me a comment if there's anything you don't fully follow. We're going to dive kind of straight in. I'm in a project here that I've already set up. I've got my master folder up here for my media pool. I'm actually in the edit window at the moment. If you look down at the bottom there, I'm in the edit panel and or the edit page and the master media pool bin is there and you can see the other bins that I've got created here. First things first, you want to make yourself, you bring your footage and then you want to make a timeline and we're going to be sort of syncing something like a ceremony or a, or, a, or a set of speeches. I've already done this actually, so in my timelines what I'll, I'll show you is I've already got uh, my doc edits, there's a ceremony, and if you look down to my timeline, that's actually a ceremony all synced up. So you can see I've actually got the two cameras that I was recording with at the time and I've got one, two, three, four other uh, audio sources as well. So I had a groom, which actually was, was one, one lapel mic on the groom, one lapel mic on the reg and the uh, task cam as it was, was recording two channels. So there we go. So I've got six streams of audio, two cameras to, to work with, multiple different recording points as well. This one's slightly easier because there's obviously only sort of big blocks of, of video footage, but the principle's the same. I'm just gonna create a new timeline by, well, a couple of different ways. Coming to file, new timeline, that's the best way, or one of the easiest ways, and just entering a new timeline. So I'm gonna put multi-cam test timeline. Come down, hit create. I probably spelled that wrong. Oh, no, did pretty well. Okay, cool. So now I've got my timeline and it's showing up down at the bottom here. Incidentally, I've got a very basic reset workspace here. I've just used the workspace and gone to reset UI layout. So if your Resolve interface looks any different, make sure you come up here, reset the UI layout. So now we've got the timeline ready to go. We can start dropping some footage in and obviously you've been very good and you've organized all of your media uh, as I have here. So I've gone to ceremony and I've got my ceremony clips here. Uh, I've obviously done some flagging and some clip colors, which are all cool things that we can do here in Resolve. And I will tell you a bit more about that in another video. Let's just sort by clip name just for the time being, because that will be the order I recorded in. This one here flagged with the red is my wide camera. And I'm just going to drop that in here. And then my other camera was this one here. Yeah, this one here through to there. I'm going to drop this one on the top. Okay, and obviously you've got those little bits where it's the smaller elements of recording is during the signing of the registers. So I'm just going to bring those in here. And that's all of that that I need. I'm going to get my audio for the ceremony, which I have here. Now, what I probably want to do actually is go to my smart bin and just find my keyword ceremony. Da -da -da. There we go. And there's my audio uh, showing up as well. So let me just see which one I've got here. So Groom Repel, I'm going to throw that on there. Each one gets a new track. Reg. This is very familiar actually to the kind of days before Pluralize. Uh, and actually one of the ways you used to have to do Pluralize is you used to have to do the, exactly this. You have to used to make up an, uh, an XML. I think actually in Final Cut you may still have to. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm just gonna put that view in just so you can see a little bit more what we've got going on here. So there's the two tracks of audio with its two accompanying audio tracks and the four different layers of audio that we've got here. So at this point I'm just gonna hit save. So Command S if you're on a Mac or Control S if you're on a PC. Once you're here, we're then going to go up to file and we're going to export XML. And normally what I do is I have a projects folder and I'll put Syncalia, which is where I'm going to do the syncing. And I use this particular format here. There are other formats that you can have here as well if you wish to. Uh, I've been using this one and it's been working fine for me. Come and save it somewhere. So hit save in the folder you want it saved in. Once you've got that, you launch Syncalia. So Syncalia is, if I think that's how you say it, is essentially a bit like Pluralize. I found it to be really good, very quick, very accurate. So now I'm in Syncalia here. I will just import my XML by clicking the button on the top left and coming to find the folder that it, or the XML that I want. Bring that in and you'll see that that starts to load up. Uh, the red bar along the top here is telling me it's getting itself all organized and sorted. Cool, so that didn't take too long, uh, probably only about a minute or two, to be honest. Uh, and you can see here, if you work your way along the top, this is kind of where we're headed. 18 clips, two cameras, four recorders, quality. I normally just put it up to the top. I think by default it sits here. I just put it there. I've never ever found any problems with uh, whichever way. You've obviously got different options. And it shows you them there. Order smart automatic is normally the way I would go. And once we're ready and the red bar is fully loaded up across the way, we just hit synchronize. 
And like all these things, it disappears and does its thing. There you go. Synchronization is now complete. So now we've got no clips remaining. Synchronized, it says 17 were synchronized. So I believe what's happened is there's one in here which is very small that it's actually missed out, which could be the case. There we go, this one here has just been missed out. Now, once a sync has been done, there's actually nothing much you can do about it. it. You can't sort of grab it and move it. It just kind of dumps it sort of where it thinks it should be. Um, to be honest, I've never really had any major issues. There's, there's not a lot you can do options-wise there either. You can't look to check your videos in sync or anything like that. But having used this for a little while now, I, I found that it's actually pretty reliable. And yeah, for the most part, uh, the sync is where it where it should be. So we're going to come over here to the export option now. So we just simply go to sequence name. So it's got multicam test timeline. Leave the synced on the end so I know which one's dip the one I need. And just click the X and then export the XML. Tell it where I want it to go. Again, I just normally take that space out just because I'm picky and dump it away. At this point, Syncali can be closed. And I come back into Resolve. Now back in Resolve, back up to File. And you're going to import the timeline, import timeline, import XML. And once you've done that, you'll fire this up and you'll see there's the synced version that we just got back in. And we're going to bring that in. You'll get this little window here, which is talking about loading an XML. And you're looking at the source file, which is what you want. It's importing the timeline that you want it to import, timeline name. These two are important. Automatically set project settings. We've already set up our project. And again, if you've listened to sort of other videos that I've done, you'd have done your project settings already. So we will tick that off because we don't want it to dictate project settings to us. And then equally, automatically import source clips into Media Pool. We're going to uncheck that because the media already exists in our Media Pool. We don't need to bring it back in. Uh, use sizing, sizing information, I just leave blank and I leave everything else blank as well. And then I just click OK. And now you're basically going to be asked where the footage is. So normally, to be honest, you can just leave it in master selected and it'll be fine. But I tend to come in and I tend to put, you know, select the media folder that I've created just so it helps it a little bit and hit OK. OK, so you get a little log and it basically tells you yeah, you start, it started importing and it's told us there's a couple of failures. And you can see that there's a couple of failures here which are shown in red. That's absolutely fine. Uh, it's actually really easily fixed. So. What you'll see is that we've got our footage and that's all still linked up and that's connected itself nicely. So that's absolutely fine. And the reg lapels come back in absolutely fine. But the groom lapel for some reason decided it, it wasn't going to sync back in. Although it's put itself in the same place. So the sync location is correct. What we do need to do though is just go and replace the media. So if I come down to my smart bin, which I created earlier for ceremony, what you'll notice is that these red, this red bar underneath the bottom of the thumbnail actually denotes whether the clip is being used in that current sequence. So if you're used to Premiere, that's very similar. I think actually Final Cut is pretty similar too. So all we're gonna do is take the Groom Lapel Lav, and we're gonna drag it out, and we're just gonna drop it. There we go, it's good. And I'm gonna do the same with this one, and drop it in, in the right place. There we go. Now, obviously, depending on your workflow, you might decide to do different things with it at this point, but this is what I tend to do. So first of all, I, just because I'm a bit of a neat freak, I like to add a couple of tracks. So, and a couple of audio tracks um, above the first track, and add tracks. And then normally what I do is I'll select these bottom ones, because this is from my wide camera, and just drag those up. And I'll normally select this one here. If you alt-click and then shift-drag, you're just dragging it up. And then I will delete these two here. So I'll just delete the empty tracks. There we go. So now I'm back in the sort of roughly the right place with the cameras in the right place, the audio tracks associated in the right place, and then the audio there. So now we're at a point where we can actually start making a multicam. So we've got a, a test timeline that's not ready, and we've got a sync timeline. Normally what I'll do is, at this point is go back to my original timeline that I created the XML from, delete the footage that's in there, so it's back to scratch, Come back into my synced timeline, select everything, copy it, and then come in here and 
paste it. So that was copying by pressing, um, so selecting everything by pressing Command A or Control A, copying by pressing Command C, and then Command V to paste. I hope everyone understood where I was there. So what we should have now is a situation where things are looking pretty similar. I'll put the sync one away at this point, knowing that that's my synced timeline and it's locked away. I can return to that sync if at any point I somehow make a mess of this one, and I start working on this one. So now at this stage, what you would do is you take a clip that you need to start putting into a multicam. So in this instance, I'm going to create these clips and put these into a multicam. I'm going to do that by just simply selecting my first clip and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to come up to find in media pool and click and it will then highlight that particular clip here. Now, once I've got that clip highlighted over in the media pool, I'll right click that and come to create new multicam clip using selected clips. Hit create. And because the time code is zeroed out here, I'll just change the time code there as well. And I'm going to put um, test multicam, something like that. And normally I normally have underscore multicam anyway, just to, to help me associate that it's a multicam. Frame rate, all this I just leave absolutely the same. This is where if you were going to do a sort of sync, you could select all of these clips, go angle sync via sound, and that's how you essentially do a sound sync in Resolve. Uh, you can also do it time code and markers, as I've said before. There's lots of ways to do it. I've just never quite found it to be particularly useful on timelines like this where there's lots going on. Simple clips, simple timelines, yeah, I've had much more success, but this is the way I'm doing it now and it's to me much more efficient. Uh, I'm not gonna move the source clips to an original clips bin, so I'm just gonna turn that off and that's now ready for me to create my multicam. So I hit create. When I do that, you'll see it populates itself down here under, under the name I've given it. So that's now showing as test multicam. I will right click this and, and then open in timeline. Now I'm looking at my multicam. So this is what's constituting the multicam. I'm gonna, obviously there's, there's only one camera at the moment. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to now delete that. So my, I've got an empty multicam timeline. Come back to my test timeline or the timeline <laughs> main one that um, I'm working with. And at this point I'll select the clips I want to take into that multicam. Hit Command C come to the multicam, make sure I'm back at the start with the playhead indicator and hit command V. Okay, so now I've actually got the clips and their associated audio in this multicam if I need it. The, if you don't need the audio, you don't have to have the audio uh, and I'll tell you what I tend to do in a minute. So once I've got that set up, I will close down that multicam and I will come back into my main timeline. Now I'm just gonna go back to where I had that multicam, which was in, da, 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 there he is. So what I tend to do now is obviously if I drag it in, it's gonna come in with its associated audio. At this stage, I don't keep the associated audio. I just delete it by pressing Alt Select and removing it. So I've got left with just my multi-camera situation here. What I'll do is I'll bring this up and over here so that it matches up with this footage, like so. And now I know that everything's in line, everything's in order. Uh, what I can actually do is to test that is just look at this. At the moment it should be showing me this angle. So if I just turn this one off and I now turn this one off, it should be exactly the same. Perfect, exactly the same, good. So with that in mind, what I then do is press and hold Alt on the keyboard, marquee select those, delete them, select this, drop it down a couple of tracks and then I'm good to go. Now, one thing I haven't done yet, actually, is in the multicam, and what I'm gonna do is, again, right click, open in timeline, is I'm actually gonna just name. I'm gonna name these angles. So for example, this might be the wide shot, and this one here might be the tight shot. Good, and what you'll see as well is by naming that, it's automatically named the associated audio too. So I'll close that down. Now I'm back in here, you'll see that that name has come through here. So that's test multicam wide. So I know that that's what I'm looking at. And the last thing we really need to do to be able to start cutting the uh, multicam together is come up to the viewer window, hover over this little icon at the bottom left, come down to multicam, select, and we've now got our multicam. You can see the two windows are right there. Along the bottom, you've got the sort of familiar options of being able to cut just the audio, just the video, or both together. And I'm just gonna have the video, that's all I need. You can have all sorts of different screens. You can have one by one if you just want to look at one. You can have one by two, four by four, if that's you know how you want to work. So now we've got the two options and you'll see they are in sync. So you can see that they are playing back quite nicely. 
and they're perfectly in sync and I'm ready to cut. Now, you can cut by just clicking the button. As you notice, the cursor changes. So as I'm coming through, and let's say I want to cut to this camera here, I just click and click and click. And I've got, and I've got my camera cuts. And you'll notice that when I zoom in, it's making the cuts in the timeline absolutely fine for me. So there's that. There's also keyboard customization that you can do for cutting between the two angles. If you come up to DaVinci Resolve in the top, keyboard customization, you've got a very familiar looking keyboard layout, I would say, in terms of making up customized controls and, and shortcuts for your, for your commands. The great thing about DaVinci Resolve is actually you can even get contextual menus within short within this shortcut customization. So actually you can actually get keyboard shortcuts for contextual menus that you would normally access with a right click of the mouse, which is really cool. For me, actually what I've done here is in, up, up here on the numeric keypad, I've got four, five, one, and two. So again, if I'm going through here now and I want to cut to camera one and then back to camera two, and then go back to camera one. God, that was a terrible cut. I wouldn't do that in normality, but that's the point. You see you see what I'm getting at. And if you'd made that cut and you weren't happy with that angle at that particular time, you wanted to cut back to the other one, just by simply holding the Alt key, you'll see that the cursor has changed to a swap. And if I just now right click, or left click, sorry, it'll swap the angle for me down in the timeline. And there, again, that's a way of doing that within a keyboard customization by pressing a modifier and the same angle, we can get the same effect. So Alt and five will switch and fall back, and Alt-5, and Alt-4 back. So now I've got um, my multicam set up and ready to work. I can cut my multicam quite happily, and then actually once you're finished, you'll notice that, much like Premiere Pro, actually you can highlight a load of these clips, you can right click them, and you can flatten the multicam clip back to its inherent state, ready for grading or something like that. Equally, um, if you want to, you just simply grab all of those, right click on a trend on an edit point delete through edit and it will just delete all of them and you're ready to start again there you go guys i hope that was quite simple and relatively painless but you're now able to work with multicams in resolve and uh, i really look forward to hearing uh, if it's helped please do let me know in the comments if that's the case do also head over to the youtube channel if you haven't already got there and done that and subscribe to my channel uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these tips and things with resolve over the next year or so and also please re feel free to reach out if you're struggling with resolve and you're making a switch from premiere or final cut to resolve and you'd like to know a little bit more about it i do offer one-to-one -one tuition as well so hopefully that will be something that maybe get you up and running quickly Thanks very much again for watching. I do appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.